Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to review the MJXRC Bugs 2. This is a GPS enabled brushless quadcopter. It was kindly sent by Gearbest for a review and in this video I'm going to take it outside for a test flight, do some range testing and I'm also going to include the video that is captured with this 2 megapixels video camera. So let's start by opening up the box and see everything we're getting inside. So inside the box we got a full size user manual and also this quick start guide which I find very useful. We're getting this simple balanced charger that is powered with a USB to micro USB cable. One set of spare propellers, a bag with this micro SD card reader, a screwdriver, a propeller extractor tool which is used to lock and unlock the propellers. The included battery is a 2S 1800 mAh 25C LiPo battery which is proprietary for this quadcopter. You will be able to change it because at the end of the day it uses an XT30 connector but still if you want it to fit well inside a quadcopter you will need to use the provided one and I'm not sure if modifying it is advisable so if you get in this quadcopter I recommend to get a couple of more spare batteries because the flight time is between 18 to 15 minutes so one battery probably is not going to be enough. Finally we're getting also of course the remote controller and the quadcopter. The weight of the quadcopter without the battery is 324.4 grams and after adding the battery it weighs 443.7 grams. The remote controller is powered by four AA batteries and it is pretty simple to use. On the top right you can see here the battery status of the quadcopter of course when it's connected. On the top left, the battery status of the remote controller. Then the number of satellites that the quadcopter is receiving. By the way, it can be turned on and off by using this switch. Right now it's going to be on freestyle mode or whatever they want to call it. So it's going to fly without satellite. Now this is, and when you turn it on, it's going to position itself based on the satellites. You need to have at least five or six satellites in order to get good stabilization. Over here we have the switch that enables headless mode. So once when it's on, you're gonna see this indication here. Over here we can see the height of the quadcopter, the distance from us, and over here the signal quality when the quadcopter is connected. You can see here we have five bars. When the bars are lost, the quadcopter is going to enter return to home mode and it's going to return to you. On the top right, we have the camera button. When you short press it, it's gonna snap a picture to the SD card. By the way, this quadcopter came with an 8 GB micro SD card that is inserted here and all the pictures and videos are going to be saved to the SD card. If you long press it, it's going to start recording a video and you will have to long press it again in order to stop the video recording process. This is the return to home button. If you long press it, the quadcopter is going to return to you and if you press it again it's going to stop the return to home procedure. On the top left we have here the unlock button that will enable you to take off so you will first have to unlock it and then you need to press this button once in order to take off and if you press it again the quadcopter is going to land. Charging the battery is done through the balance connector you will have to connect the balance connector to this port on the left. When it will be charged this green indicator is going to blink and when the charging process is going to be finished it's going to turn solid. On the user manual it states that it takes about five hours for fully charged. I've used it a couple of times and I think the average time for charging is about two hours to two and a half hours. So this is a pretty slow charger. If you have another charger at home for example like the SDTD2 which I have you can just make an adapter from an XT60 to an XT30 female connector and then you will be able to charge its battery much faster and it's going to take you less than an hour. The quadcopter doesn't have any power on switch so once you connect it it's just going to turn on and make sure that the battery latch is secured. When you first use it you will have to bind the remote controller to the quadcopter. You will have to press the red button then turn it on and now it's going to be bound. This procedure has to be done only once. Next time you will turn it on. You don't have to press the red button, just turn it on. And you can see right now we have signal and you can see that the battery of the quadcopter is only at 75% more or less. This is not an accurate read, so I recommend you to 
whenever you're using the quadcopter just fully charge it and then take it for a flight don't fly it when the battery is not full before taking it outdoors for a test flight i'm just going to add fpv by simply putting this txo3 camera on the top like that and i'm gonna power it off using one s battery which i'm going to secure here on the back and I've already take, took it outside and tested it and the range was pretty impressive. Actually, even though this is a 200 milliwatt camera, the range that I got was better than the range of the quadcopter. So let's take it outside and see how the test flight went. So overall, I think that the MJX Bugs 2 is a really nice toy grade quadcopter. It flies pretty well, but as you could see, the video quality is not great. However, it is fun to fly and because you have the built-in GPS in case you lose orientation or something goes wrong, you just have to press the return to home button. Of course, if you have enough satellites and it will just go back without any problems. I've already reviewed this Hubsen H502e, which also has a built-in GPS, but the Bugs 2 is much more powerful, it flies faster, and you can't really compare these two. Of course, it's also a little bit cheaper than the Bugs 2 as well. In addition, I highly recommend you to add FPV to this quadcopter, because I don't think it is much fun to fly it without it. You will lose sight of it probably after 20, 30 meters. So even though you can fly it up to 600 meters, it's not going to be usable for you. But if you will add FPV, you are going to have much more fun and you can just buy simple FPV goggles like the VR007 for less than $50. And then for about $250, you have a nice FPV set that will enable you to fly FPV. And I think then it will be much more enjoyable than just flying it without the FPV mode. So I hope you enjoyed this video and you find it useful. If you have any questions about this quadcopter, feel free to ask it in the comment section below and I'll see you on my next videos. Goodbye.